And we're live. I hope you guys can see this. Um, hi, this is George once again. Um, this, I'm using, I think we're live now. Okay, I really hope so. I'm using the new, uh, the new Facebook app for live videos and uh, the interface at least is not the easiest thing to do. So I can't really see who is on here. Um, I guess I have two watches right now. If you were so kind, write a comment so I can see that you're on this. Um, again, trying to work with this new interface and it's kind of difficult. Um, but I hope you're all well. I hope you're, uh, let me put this down for a second. I hope you're all well. I hope you're all staying sane um, amidst the, uh, hey, what's going on, Marco? Okay, now at least I see where the, sh the chat is. What's going on, John Diener? Good to see you. Um, Leo, what's going on? Hello? <laughs> that's that's uh, German for hello. <laughs> Um, multi speaking a lot of languages here. Um, so I hope you're all staying sane amidst the plethora of bad news that's coming at us every day. What's going on, Kevin? Long time no see. Hope you're well. Um, you know, I, I definitely, I was definitely considering not doing a video this week, um, simply because, um, I just couldn't, uh, I couldn't bear with the news. Wait, I just got a message. Sadi, um, um, yes, um, you should be able to see the video on the group. It is live streaming to George's base chat. Um, let me just write him a message. Live streaming to As you can all see, this is very high end here. Okay, this whole production is, you know, really giving you the, the works. <laughs> okay, now everybody's commenting in, in German. That is great. Uh, what's going on, Wyeth? <laughs> Carlos Mania, good to see you. <laughs> yeah, Multicoti. Exactly, Leo Smith. <laughs> Servus. <clears throat> it's very funny. Um, Anyway, so I was seriously considering not doing this video this week because uh, the news is just getting worse and worse and worse. And, um, you know, I would be lying if I had said that it's not um, grating on my mind as well. Um, I still decided to go ahead and do the video and uh, at least, um, you know, at least, uh, you know, do something, do this thing that I can do. Um, well, Sadi, I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, try refreshing. Um, try refreshing. Uh, maybe it's in the browser. If anybody knows this, um, Sadi, Sadi Sain, another bass player here in New York, um, this is going out to whoever is watching, um, is trying to see the video, the live video on the group chat, and apparently he can't see it. Um, if anybody knows how to deal with this, please write a comment uh, and let me know, because um, I'd love for him to see this. Uh, yeah, Marco, let's let, let's definitely refresh the White House while we're at it. <laughs> that would be uh, two thumbs way up. That would be that is very necessary. Um, so come November, everybody go out and vote and get these these assholes out of power. Okay, that's that's our only our only chance. Okay, Saudi is here. Wonderful. Um, so as I said, uh, took me a minute this week to kind of prepare myself and, 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 and put this video up. 
not because the subject matter is difficult. The subject matter is not difficult for me to talk about. I, 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 the topic of today's video is subbing. Um, could also be entitled um, uh, preparation for subbing, you know, but subbing in general, I thought was, was better. Um, hey, Dennis, what's going on? So, but um, yeah, it took a minute for me to kind of get past the news items that are bombarding us right now every day um, and kind of find my strength or find my focus, which I guess is my strength um, and do this video. And um, I would be amiss to say thank you all for tuning in because um, you, of course, I'm sharing some of my experiences. I'm sharing some of my information. Um, but, um, you guys are sharing and ladies are sharing your time with me. And that is incredibly valuable. And I do want to acknowledge how that, that I, that I see that as, see that as an incredible value. So having said that, Hey, what's going on, Tony Ventura? Good to see you. Um, so here we are. Today we're going to talk about subbing. I'm going to talk about subbing, and you guys are going to listen. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, <laughs> that is, um, you know, that's uh, there's a lot to be said about subbing, and um, so let's let's just start with a couple definitions because that always helps. Um, when I talk about subbing. Of course, I am predominantly talking about subbing on a musical theater uh, job, but the preparation that goes into this endeavor, uh, in my opinion, can very well be used at other jobs as well. And um, I noticed from my experience, uh, preparing for a subbing situation or for a subbing job has definitely uh, has greatly influenced how I approach every gig now. Um, and um, so let's dive into it. A little bit of history. Uh, I started subbing after going to a workshop of John Millis. John Millis is a bass player and uh, one of the main contractors, theatrical contractors here in New York. And uh, he did a workshop all the way back in 2004 um, Bass Player Magazine had this annual event, Bass Day, and they were hosting it in here in New York for a number of years, actually. And uh, I went to a few of them. I definitely went to the very first one, which was in 1997. If you see that video, um, there's a video of uh, John Paritucci Clinic, and there's a guy with round glasses asking him a question about, um, about composition with locks, everything, that guy's me, okay? So if you want to go look for that, or if somebody has that video, it would be awesome to, to get like a screen, a screen grab of that. I don't have the video. Um, nevertheless, um, so I went to base day in 2004. I went to a couple clinics, um, and one of them was Sean Miller, and his was entitled Getting and Surviving a Broadway Gig. Um, just before that day of clinic started, I had to run out, um, and get a notebook and a pencil or a number of pencils. Cause I, for whatever reason, I didn't bring anything to write. And here is my original notebook with all the notes that I took that day. All right. Um, so if anybody is interested in these notes, let me know. I am more than happy to share them with you. Okay. Uh, nothing what I'm talking about, um, nothing that uh, has helped me get to where I am is a secret. Okay. Um, I got that. This is not my, that kind of thinking is not my invention. Uh, there is a, a great sound mixer by the name of Bruce Sweden, who has the distinguished honor, distinguished honor of, um, having recorded and mixed a lot of music, including Off the Wall, Michael Jackson's, Michael Jackson's Off the Wall and Thriller. 
and bad. And um, the Wiz. Um, so his philosophy was nothing that I do is, is a secret. Anybody can do it. And if you ask me, here's the information. That's why I'm opening this up. Um, anybody who wants a copy of these notes, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to copy it and send it off. Okay. Uh, so I went to the clinic and John pretty much laid it out very laid it out very clearly how to get into the Broadway scene, how to get into the musical theater scene and, um, and how to keep that gig. Okay. And perhaps thrive in it. Um, and after that clinic, um, you know, I took notes during the clinic. Um, I followed these notes very diligently. Um, I called people I knew who had worked uh, in musical theater settings, in who had worked theater gigs. And through a number of connections, I ended up with my first subbing job, which was The Lion King. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you know, at the time, Tom Barney uh, was the bass player and still is um, the bass player at The Lion King. Uh, he was kind enough to have me come in. And um, I later learned that he already had seven, eight subs at the time. Uh, according to our bargaining agreement, we need to have at least five subs. And, um, you know, if you have more than that, at least that's how I understand it. Um, you know, that's up to the, really to the MD's discretion. But um, he already had enough subs and he didn't need another one but he opened that up that possibility up for me regardless and um, i am very very grateful for that okay um needless to say the lion king is is uh was for me at the time a tall order that was a, a difficult show to play and still is um it was uh the first time that i had ever done anything like that i had previously subbed for a friend of mine at regional theater productions. Um, and to be honest, that was just one of those gigs that you did that you don't necessarily think about too much. Um, and you, you know, you take the pathway, the path train all the way out to Rahway and play at the Rahway uh, theater, whatever it's called. Uh, I remember playing chorus line as the world turns, uh, Oh, uh, Man of La Mancha. So I definitely did that as well. But that was kind of it. I had not had any experience. I certainly hadn't had any experience here in the city. Oh, there was one other thing, a broad off-Broadway show called Tokyo Can Can Part 2. I subbed on that one too, way before The Lion King. But hey, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, these are gigs that you do, you know, and especially if you're new in town um you know you try to take whatever comes your way and you it would behoove you to do that um so 2004 i go to to miller's workshop i take notes i follow the notes and uh i get hooked up with a connection to tom barney um and uh you know i went down there and at the time the lion king was still at the uh, at the new Amsterdam theater on, uh, which is on 42nd street. And, uh, um, the stage door was on 41st street, I believe. Yes. Now in the meantime, it has moved to the Minskov theater, which is somewhat in the same neighborhood, or just a couple blocks up. Nevertheless, it was, it was at the old location at the new, is that the right name? I hope I'm using the right name. I, I don't, I honestly don't remember. Um, at the new Amsterdam theater at the time, um, there was hardly any, uh, there was no separation between the drums and the rest of the band. If I remember this correctly, we were still in the pit in the actual orchestra pit. Um, you still, you had to play with headphones. Um, Tom had an enormous, uh, amp sitting next to him which I believe was an Eden world traveler with a four by 10 speaker cabinet. 
And uh, whoever, <laughs> whoever knows Tom Barney knows that he's, number one, a fantastic bass player and uh, <laughs> it therefore does not hold back when it comes to volume. <laughs> so <laughs> when we say that Pitt was rocking, it was rocking, okay? This, and that was all coming from him. There was just no two ways about that. Um, it was it was fantastic. I, I certainly enjoyed it. And I'll, I'll have something to show you guys um, like what that actually sounded like. So I go down there, I introduce myself to Tom. And, um, you know, at the time I even had a little folder. I remember a folder with my biography and, and pictures and, and whatnot. So at least I had something to present a little more than um, just a business card, um, you know, and to kind of show that I was serious. And I think that, you know, maybe it made an impression, maybe not, I don't know. But that's what I had with me. Um, so, and he was kind enough to give me a copy of of the, the base book. Um, I don't remember whether I made a recording of the show the first time I went um, or the second time. Uh, I definitely went a couple times. I, I watched the show a couple times. Uh, and one of those times I actually did make a recording, which I was not supposed to do. Um, I didn't really uh, know any better, but um, there was no way to do a line recording from an avion system because at the time they didn't use an avion system. You had like live monitors and um you know you were not able to dial in your sound or anything like that nobody was using in-ears uh if anything they were using these uh the sony pros headphones um let me un untangle that which i love uh but ever since i switched to in-ears i've never switched back so these were the ones that you saw a lot in sony pro whatever these are called, MDR 7506. Um, you know, everybody knows these well enough. And they have a very distinct sound, though. They're very bass heavy. So at least for us bass players, that's, that's, a, that's a, you know, that's a treat. Uh, so, yeah, in, in the pit of the New Amsterdam, you could hear everything. There was no separation between drums. Uh, bass amplifier, guitar amplifier, uh, the three keyboards that are, uh, that are being played. Uh, I don't really remember where the violins were or the, 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 the horns. It, it, was, it was, a lot of that was kind of a blur um, because the whole situation was so new. And the reason why I'm painting a picture or that, that precise of a picture is because I want to get to this next point, and that is when you do end up subbing, you are in an environment that is um, completely new to you. And, and, you know, I've said this before in conversations with, with colleagues, I believe that subbing on a theater gig here in New York is the most difficult job in the city. Um, there is nothing that, that, that is as nerve wracking and as difficult to do as subbing on a theater show and especially on a Broadway show. You have, uh, you know, if you have a full theater, take the Lion King, take Ain't Too Proud, take whatever show, you know, anywhere between 500 to 1500, 2000 um, guests expecting to hear what uh, John, May John Miller uh, called, um, at the time he called it CD quality, album quality. Okay. So no mistakes, no, th there's, there's no room for any of that. Um, yeah, it is nerve wracking to say the least. And you don't get a rehearsal and you don't get any kind of preparation time or, or anything like that. You do get the book and you get the material, uh, at the time that was, you know, this actually, this is my copy of the Lion King. Um, and if you can see this, this copy, this manila folder was brand new when, when I started it. And in the meantime, this has been well worn. The pages have been, um, taped together 
multiple times. Um, so it, it is the most difficult, subbing on Broadway is the most difficult job in town. Um, there's just no two ways about that. Uh, I dare anybody to go in and um, be as cool as a cucumber and just nail it without any any preparation. Um, good luck. <laughs> anyway, so the reason why I'm going into all this detail is to kind of set up the picture for you guys to um, understand what's going through my mind with this first serving job. Okay. Uh, okay, so fast forward a couple months. Um, I was, uh, I actually had a day gig at the time. I was uh, working construction, but um, I also was learning this show. I watched it a couple more times. Um, and Tom was kind enough to kind of stay on me. And that's something that, that I am really grateful for uh, to him because he basically said, you know, listen, you want, you said that you wanted to do this. So what's up? You know, are you ready or not? And I finally had to say, okay, I'm ready. I can do this. Of course, not knowing at the time what was going to happen. Um, but I had prepared myself very well. And um, I had damn near memorized the entire show in, in my preparation. Um, now, that is not necessarily required, okay? Uh, that's, just, that's just how my brain works and, and how it worked at the time. And how, that made it easier for me to retain the information, retain his playing, um, and keep as many cues um, in my head as possible, you know. So uh, I, I got the, the call to play the show, um, and I went in, uh, played the show, everything went well. It was um, totally exhausting. Um, I remember meeting my partner afterwards um, and basically just sitting at a bar and being like, I can't talk anymore. I'm, I'm totally exhausted. There's nothing coming out. I'm, I'm spent, I, you know. Uh, in the meantime, of course, I have subbed at more than 20, perhaps 30 shows. Um, I have gone in with a lot of preparation and uh, I have gone in at the drop of a dime to play shows. I have read some of those shows cold. I've memorized some of the shows. Uh, I have uh, subbed at two, sometimes three different different shows on the same day. Um, I think the, the best, the highest number of shows that I knew at the time was nine. So I was subbing at nine shows at the time. At, uh, and I've, I've definitely taken full advantage of the possibility of subbing here in the city and subbing musical theater shows. Um, it's, it's something that I highly recommend to anybody wanting to get into uh, the musical theater job world uh, because it's it's a great introduction it's a great way to um yeah as i said introduce yourself and make your presence known uh make your presence known in terms of i can do this job okay and here i can back this up i can back that statement up all right um so The one thing that you will have to deal with uh, when subbing a show or when subbing any other gig, okay, is you'll have to face your demons. You have to face your nerves, okay? And um, just to give you an, an example of how, how bad that can go or how bad that can be, when I subbed uh, The Lion King for the first time, I played this instrument here which was my um, five string at the time. Um, this is a Hauke bass that I had made in Vienna. And um, let's see if you guys can see this. 
The Lion King starts with the uh, circle of life. Uh, the first note that the bass is playing is a low D on the B string, which is right here. All right. You can even hear this. Uh, <laughs> as I'm sitting there, and I'll play through all of this here now to show you um, what, what it entailed. As I'm sitting there and the show is starting, I am looking at the fingerboard, I'm holding on to the third fret of the B string, and I am questioning, this is after you know being a professional musician, and I am questioning whether this is really a D. Is the third fret on the B string really a D? That's the nerves kicking in, okay? It makes you question everything, okay? It makes you question, is this your left hand? Is this your right hand? Do I really have to wear these glasses? Wouldn't it be easier without these glasses? Because, you know, I might be able to see better. Um, am I hearing the same amount in my left and in my right ear? Or is one ear perhaps better than the other? Okay. It, it makes you question everything. Okay. Um, do not underestimate this. So it's, it's pretty intense. Okay. Um, let me play for you the beginning of the Lion King. So I get this out of the way. Um, and at least give you an example of what, um, what I did back then. Uh, also, what you're going to hear, the accompanying track, is the original recording that I took all those years back. Um, those rec that recording was done with a small mini microphone. So you will hear uh, different instructions that the conductor, uh, Carl German, is giving to members of the orchestra while we are starting, while the playing is starting. Um, it's it's very funny. I still have it saved on my trusty iPod. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's 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 somewhat difficult for me to put into words the emotions that that go through me when I hear that recording because um, it's been it's been a long time that this has been with me and I definitely taken full advantage of it and uh, made a life, you know, out of playing musical theater gigs. Um, and, uh, you know, it has, it has helped me a lot. Um, so here it is. This is the Lion King. Bear with me as I am changing a lot of these cables um, and some of these settings. Okay.
So I hope you guys were able to hear this. Um, that was the first song of The Lion King, um, Circle of Life. And that was the first musical theater song that I ever played um, live in a setting. Um, yeah, Sadi, thanks for, yeah, the B, B string of this bass sounds really great. I love it. Um, I love it. I think that it would be, it would behoove me to change the strings at some point. But um, for those of you who are interested, this was made in Vienna. Um, this is, this was actually the last, I have four bases by this luthier, Roland Hauke. And uh, this is the last of the four. Uh, this is a threaded five string um, that, you know, true to my own nature i i people who know me know this about me i'm i'm not very precious when it comes to my instruments so if something doesn't work for me then i have a tendency of cutting into it and or not me of course but having another luthier you know fix it um so with this particular instrument this back pickup used to be all the way back here and that's probably how it was um and this whole bridge, not this bridge in particular, because if I had a different one, the bridge was further back. I don't know if you see this, but there's like a little indentation over here. This is where the bridge was. And the great luthier, Mas Hino, um, when I brought the bass to him, he kind of talked me into 
the scale of the base not being correct and therefore the bridge should be somewhere else. I will not argue with him. He did a great job. Okay. The pickup got moved. Um, at the time I was probably, I was using the same pickups, which are Bartolini's. Uh, I probably had a Bartolini preamp in here. Now there's a Penza preamp in here with a parametric EQ um, uh, knob where I can change mids and change how much dB um, I, I, I use basically. But the main setup is volume, pickup selector, and the Penza preamp, which is treble, uh, boost and cut, and a bass boost. And that's kind of it. Um, it's a neck through instrument. Um, it's got an ebony fingerboard. And I don't know if I'll be able to show all of this, but when we when we <laughs> when I had the the base made, um, we kind of forgot to put dots on the side. So I've been for all these years I've been painting in the dots myself, um, and that was also you know those were the dots that I needed. <laughs> <laughs> when playing the Lion King. As I said, this one is the fourth of uh, uh, of the basses that Hauke made for me. Um, I have the first five string here with me. Let me just see if I can grab it. This was the first five string that Hauke made for me. Um, obviously, again, like we always had to fix positioning right what's going on Ruben good to see you uh, obviously we took the body from uh, an alembic but um, yeah at the time when I was playing the, the Lion King for the very first time this one was the only one the only five string that I had with me and that's the one that I used um, and to be honest I'm, I'm quite proud of that because this instrument came all the way from Vienna and made it all the way to Broadway to New York and was used on Broadway. So uh, there you have it, The Lion King, OK? Um, is there fretless on The Lion King? Well, there used to be fretless on The Lion King. Uh, by the time I played it, um, that had been changed. There was uh, upright bass and uh, electric bass. But to get back to the topic of subbing, um, as I said, that was my first subbing job. Uh, how do I prepare for a subbing job? At the time, also, I didn't necessarily have this, uh, the method that I'm about to explain. Um, my next subbing job was, uh, it was either Wicked or it was, no, it was Mamma Mia. Uh, was it Mamma Mia? I don't remember. It was probably it was probably Wicked. I did like one show of Wicked, and then my first chair actually started, so I never got to play it again. Um, but then the next show that I had to learn was Mamma Mia, and um, to this day, I when asked, you know, what was the most difficult show to sub on, um, I answer with Mamma Mia, not because of any kind of personal situation or not getting along with the band or anything like that. No, it was the playing that was the most difficult thing for me. Um, the music of ABBA is uh, pop music, you know, very, very much in the disco vein, um, very much, you know, sounding, uh, very American sounding, even though it came from Europe. Um, so it had a lot of emphasis on the bass. And um, I played it the first time I played it. Every, you know, I had prepared the same way I had prepared with the Lion King, which was basically just playing through the show over and over and over again. Not necessarily stopping, just playing through it, getting through it, and um, trying to retain as much information that way as possible. Uh, the first time I played Mamma Mia, everything went great. It was, um, you know, it was, it, I, I played, I did a really good job. The conductor came up to me afterwards, you know, can't believe you never played this show. 
you know, be happy to have you again, et cetera, et cetera. And I did get called for it again. Second time I played it, uh, nerves started kicking in. Dry mouth, sweaty hands, um, sweat on my forehead. Um, it was, and, and, and with that came a jumpiness in my, in my playing. Not necessarily, uh, not necessarily train wrecks, but just not being as solid as you need it to be in order to play that show. Again, everything sits on top of the bass. So, you know, kind of chalked it up to second show jitters, second time jitters, um, but was still able to get called back you know, to, to, to be called back for, for yet another subbing day. Third time I did it, it got worse, you know. Now I'm really freaking out. Now I'm really just having a hard time keeping it together. I'm, I'm messing up lines, I'm messing up systems. I'm, 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 you know, constantly jumping from one measure to the next. I am just, my senses are, are, are playing tricks on me. I, I think that I'm not hearing enough. I keep turning myself up. I keep turning myself down. I keep turning the other instruments up and down in, in what was the precursor to the Aviom system that they were using at Mamma Mia. Um, it, was, uh, it was terrible, you know. Uh, and gladly, it wasn't bad, that bad that I got, I got, act, I got nixed. Um, but it was definitely noticeable to the point where the conductor took me aside and said, listen, you know, what's up? You know, you did really well the first couple of times. What's going on? You know, and I, I couldn't, I didn't have an answer. I did not have an answer. So fast forward another two times playing the show. Every time it got worse. So now I've played the show five times. And um, that's not some kind of magical number or anything. That was just, you know, that was somewhat of a turning point for me because I had had it. I had had, I'd had it with uh, feeling defeated. I'd had it with, you know, losing my cool every time I played this show. One of the big things or one of the big, um, just as a side note here, one of the attitudes that I take when, when it comes to subbing is I read this in an interview with Nathan East where he talked about, um, working in studios in, in Los Angeles where you, you know, there would be so much work that basically you had to go in, kick ass and leave. And you had to be good enough to do that. And that's kind of the attitude that I adapted to subbing. Basically you go in, you try to be, you know, you better prepare really well before, but you go in, you kick ass, you play the show, like it's your book and then you leave. So that's what I intended to do with Mamma Mia. And I was getting frustrated that I was not able to do that. And finally, I basically got over myself and, and I called another sub who was a good friend, who is a good friend of mine, um, another bass player here, but in, in, in the city by the name of Frank Canino. And, and we had a long conversation about this. And uh, Frank kind of set in motion the method that I to this day use when I have to learn a show and what he said, um, which stuck with me was basically you have to realize that you only have to play one song at a time. And if you take it even a step further, you're only playing one note at a time. Okay. So focus on that. Don't focus on the entirety of the show when preparing a subbing job. Focus on that one song, okay? Try to nail that one song. And once you nail that, then you focus on the next one. So what did that, that became kind of my, that became the basis for how I learn shows when I am subbing. Also, please note that I'm making a very, clear distinction between subbing a show and playing the show, meaning being a sub for the chairholder or being the chairholder. Those are two very, very different ways how to, how to prepare for this gig um, and, and how to approach it. Okay. With a sub as a sub, your only responsibility is to sound like the chairholder. 
you do not have a musical personality. You don't have that luxury. You are there as a placeholder for the original player, whoever that is, however they play, whatever they play. Okay. So that, that, that's, that's the job that, and that does not change no matter what. Um, so my method of learning a show is basically I divide it into three. I divide the learning part into three sections. There is for me learning, repeating, playing. Okay. In the learning part, I have the base book. I have a recording. Nowadays, uh, you also get a lot of um, uh, conductor videos, which are helpful. Uh, back when I started, uh, we didn't have that. Um, but if it's there, great. You know, if not, you have to make do without it. Um, and with the learning part of the show, I take each song and I look where where is it on the neck, be it upright or or electric, whatever whatever the instrument is, fretless five string, four string, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, I find out where the notes are. Okay. I go through it with, um, you know, I find with, with a magnifying glass and, and find out like, how do I, how am I going to, what fingerings am I going to use? All of the details that need to, that need to come. I go through it with the recording that I have is, you know, I, I, I compare the recording to what the written part is. There is the is the regular player going off book? Is he right or she uh, playing um, licks, fills that are different? You know, um, all of that. If there are any fills, if there are any licks, I learn those. Okay, I I write them out. Uh, if I don't write them out, I make sure that I make some sort of mark on my music that there is a fill here, okay? That the fill is going to be played at a certain point. And I try to memorize it. Um, I, I <laughs> Side note, I get these questions a lot because I tend to fill a lot. Um, and, and my subs or people who want to sub for me are, you know, asking the question, okay, well, am I supposed to learn your fills? And my answer is yes, absolutely. You are supposed to learn my fills, you're supposed to sound like me. Even if I change the fills every night, you need to learn the ones that are on the recording that you learn from. End of story. Okay. There's no, no two ways about that. Um, and what you heard just now, when I was playing the Lion King, um, there's a good amount of fills in there that I copped straight from Tom Barney. There's just no two ways about that. Um, and as every week, I'm going to get to all of these questions probably after the video. And I'll just write in my replies because it, it would take too long. We're already over 45 minutes. But coming back to the method. Um, so the first part is learning the show. Okay. Um, you learn the show. You take it apart. You figure out where, what the fingerings are. You figure out, you know. What instruments am I going to use? Am I going to play my own instruments or am I going to play the shareholders instruments? How close can I get to the instrument that he, that he or she is playing, um, you know, here at home? Those are all questions that you have to ask yourself and uh, you have to prepare for. Um, usually you have to play these days, you have to play the shareholders basses. Okay. Um, just for continuity of sound. Then the second part of the, of learning of how to learn these shows is repetition. Okay. And by that, I mean, taking one song at a time and repeating it and trying to get to either playing through the entire song three times without a mistake or five times without a mistake. Three times is good. Five times is probably better. Okay. And the minute, but this is, this is where it gets a little tricky because you have to be extremely honest with yourself. The minute you mess up, you start over again. Okay. For me, the way how I understood that was the minute I touched the wrong string, 
I started over. That's how serious I am about this. That's how, that's the kind of commitment that I believe it takes to be a good son. So five times without a mistake, I guarantee you that by the time you finish that fifth time, it is in your bones. The song is in your bones. The shifts that you have to do on your left hand are in your bones. Wherever you have to skip strings, whatever you have to do with a bow, it's in your bones. And by that mean that it is totally memorized and you are at this nice place where you are not necessarily totally relying on muscle memory, but your muscle memory is kicking in and it's it's helping you play a certain, basically it's helping you read a, a piece of music. And then, so we've talked about learning, we've talked about repeating, and then there's playing, okay? And by playing this, the show, I mean playing through the entire show, start to finish um, without a mistake. And the more you can do that, the better it is. Also, let me just back up one second, because this is one thing that, that, that Frank actually instilled in me. Again, big up to Frank Tanina for, for taking the time to talking to me about this, because it really helped me. Um, if you take a song, this is going back to the repeating point. If you take a song and you repeat it, right, and say, you repeat every song three times. Um, by the time you're at the last song and you've repeated the last song three times, it's basically as if you played the entire show three times already. Okay. That is something that that's, I hadn't thought of that. And, and, and that thought alone helped me with the next part of learning a show and preparing for a subbing job, which was playing it. Because by the time it got to, I got to playing through the entire show, I had in the back of my mind, wait a second, I've done this already three times. This is not new. And a lot, what subbing is concerned is getting your nerves under control, yeah? getting your nervous system to respond in a way that you are still alert, that you're still able to take in information because you don't know what's going on around you in the pit. You don't know whether those are your regular players or subs as well. You don't know whether the conductor that you have now familiarized yourself with is going to be conducting that night. Could be somebody else, somebody different, right? So you need your, your nervous system needs to be at this, again, at this right place where your muscle memory, you're not totally relying on your muscle memory, but it's kicking in, okay? And it's going, to, you know, your hands are moving to the right place because you have done that, you've been in that place already so many times, right? So with the, rep with the playing part, I tend to play through the entire show at least once, if not twice a day, okay? Um, and if I can do that, a solid three to five days before I play my first show, that is optimal. Sometimes you have that time, some, you know, many times you don't. Uh, but um, I'd say, yeah, that's, that's three to five days every day, once, maybe twice. Um, that certainly helps. Uh, by the time, having prepared that, you know, having prepared, now I'm coming back to Mamiya, uh, having prepared that particular show in that fashion, all of a sudden I came back into it and it was not a problem anymore. I ended up subbing a lot on Broadway and I ended up subbing on the tour of Mamma Mia. And I don't remember whether it was the first national or second national or whatever it was, but I was there for uh, uh, a considerable amount of time. So that was... Um, that's my method of how to prepare for a show, okay? Again, learning, repeating, playing. Those are the three, the three factors. Um, those are the ones, you know, those are the, the, the parts that, that, that help me. Um, 
I'm trying to think of if there's anything that I'm leaving out with this. I don't think there is. You know, this, this, as I said, the biggest issue that you have to uh, face or the biggest opponent that you have to face when it comes to subbing is yourself. Uh, it's, it's getting your nerves under control, getting your nervous system, your get the chitters out before, you know, make sure that um, if you are playing your own instruments, make sure that your instruments are really working. Okay, this, uh, this is not the time for anything to break down. That's absolutely not, you know, but most of the time nowadays, you're playing the shareholders basis. Um, because it just makes for a more uh, continuous sound production. So, as I said, these are my thoughts on how to prepare for a subbing job. Um, I'm sure that there are lots of questions. Um, I hope that uh, these uh, bits of information that I have to share, um, you know, that you guys can use them. Um, apply them. Uh, all of these videos, by the way, and I should definitely note it, uh, mention that all of these videos are um, archived on my YouTube page. So if you want to do a search for my name for George Farmer on YouTube, um, you will find all of these videos um, and the ones that are coming as well. Um, I strongly recommend going there and uh, perhaps following uh, or liking videos because um, that's fairly new and I'm just starting to do to put all of that together. But you have if you have questions and you want to go back and check out um, some of the other videos, they're all there. Uh, and I think you can also find them here on the on the Facebook chat. But if you can't, they are definitely at on the YouTube channel. All right. So as I say every week. Thank you all so much for sharing your time with me. I hope that uh, you guys got some good information out of this. Um, yeah, subbing is um, is tough. Subbing is is tough. Uh, I I certainly enjoy it. I certainly uh, I enjoy doing it. Uh, I will continue to do it to a certain degree. Um, I highly recommend it for everybody, um, whether you want to play musical theater or not, or whether you want to be a freelancer, uh, whatever you want to do, I highly recommend putting yourself into that situation. Even, even if the only outcome is, I really don't want to do this. Okay. Unless you have done it, unless you have been there, unless you have felt all these emotions that go through you, when you're sitting there and you are alone, okay, um, I think it's it's kind of difficult to imagine how difficult this 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 job really is. Uh, so it would behoove us, it would behoove everybody, in my opinion, to go in and check it out um, and and see whether it's for you. You know, um, you don't have anything to lose, and and anybody who tells you, oh, you know, you beware, you know, you don't want to mess up, you don't want to fuck up, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. It happens. Okay, there's there's no there's no two ways about that. It happens. Um, you know, sometimes you're gonna mess up sometimes not, uh, but you will have done it. And you will have gained that experience and you have, you know, hopefully learned from learned how you react to that particular type of stress. Okay. Um, and that makes it very much worthwhile. Uh, aside from the fact that, you know, this is uh, a, an, a way for us to make money, okay, for us musicians to make money. Um, and it would behoove us to be just like with everything else, be as good um, at executing this part of the job as with everything else. So I hope you found this informative. Um, I hope to see all of you again next week. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the subject is going to be, but I know that um, I have to talk about show preparation. And I think Memphis, the show Memphis is next. 
um, which should be a lot of fun. I got, um, I'm very proud of that show. So uh, as I say every week, be kind to each other, be cool, and don't forget that we only have each other. So be kind and be cool. Big shout out to the essential workers, big shout out to the nurses, to the doctors, and to everybody who's holding it down for us and who is making our lives possible. Okay. I'll see you all next week. Later.